lab guy here. It's time for your uh, weekly update or bi-weekly update in this case. I've been working on the 10-4 Eleanor all week, doing wiring, wrote some software, created some images, uh, programmed the uh, flash memories and installed them discovered a horrendous wiring error or a design error repaired that and have reached a milestone which you will see at the end of this video and uh, in the following video we will go through the operational 10-4 Eleanor we have reached the plateau where it is first order functional as you may be noticing it's uh, it's running we're there um, this turd still requires a little extra polish to get it shiny but we have reached first order plateau of operation and uh, we'll go into much more detail about that in the next video. So this video will show you a series of short clips that led up to this point. So I hope you enjoy it and I hope you're excited to see the next video because that's the one. So without further ado let's get into our historical clips right now and I'll talk to you again at the end of those. So what are we doing, lab guy? Well, I'm creating 256 initial images for the 10-4 Eleanor memory. Each frame is just black with the frame number printed in it. I'm making these by hand. Each one is 32 pixels wide, 32 lines, and 64 pixels high. There, this image here is extremely magnified. That is approximately or actually actual size. All right, so I've blown it up so that I can work on it. In fact, I need to blow it up big enough so I can read the file name up here. All righty, so I have this image over here which has all my digits. All right, we've saved this one. It's it's called count underbar 32 x 64 x 8 or 32 by 64 by 8 bits underscore number 143 dot raw. This program is Corel Paint Shop and it can save raw data. This file is 60 is 32 pixels wide 64 pixels high and has a bit depth of 8 bits it's a single monochrome grayscale plane I'm programming it with either a zero in the location or all ones a 255 so that we're we're either black or we're white and these are just default initial frames to create the memory so that when we start we have a memory with something in it and when we're looking at our frame number on the computer that runs the Eleanor if there's a discrepancy, say I've got a couple of bits switched the frame number of, that the computer says won't match the number in the frame in theory this assumes that a later program I write will get these in the right place so we've got a folder full of these raw files all right and we're doing each one by hand because in the end writing a program to do this would take me longer than just sitting here and cutting and pasting and here's how it works I go into my master I do control C to copy I click on the top of the frame of this picture and I say control E to insert I move my my digit in. Notice that when it's not positioned you can see the old digit sticking out from underneath. 
So I can move him around until he perfectly covers the previous digit. I click it and it's placed. I hit F12 for save as and then I rename it to the next digit 144 and save. I go over here, I do it again. I get the 5. Control C, Control E, position, click, click, save. 145. That's why this is faster than writing a program. Is it tedious and painful? Oh, very. I'm getting quite a backache doing this. So, Control C, Control E, okay, centered, click, F12, rename, 146, and save. Copy the 7, Control Copy, Control E, and position, clear the frame, F12, 147, and save. And we are done. Woohoo! Now there should be 256 of these, but I do have some that have. What the heck was that? I do have some that are have different names. Okay, so there's three that have different names than the rest in this folder. So we've got 256 items selected. So they're all there according to just a, a straight count. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 3. I'll spare you the rest. Okay. So we have all of our uh, digits done now. Now it will be time to write a basic program that will read each one of these files and assemble them into a 524,288 byte uh, binary image file to put into my image proms and initially the same file will be copied three times into all three proms and uh, it, even though it's a color generator, this will produce black and white output, which is fine because I need that. In fact, I'll have to generate, I do have test patterns generated. Uh, we can look at those, in fact. Uh, raw image files. So, we have an actual size color bar file here. And when I say actual size, I mean in this image, it's mapped one to one to the pixels on my monitor. All right, there's there's our color bar file that will be 
loaded at location 255 because the stupid generator was going to start up at that address. Um, it's just a hardware problem. So there's that picture. Let's see. I'll load another one for you. Um, There's one. Do you recognize that person? Or perhaps this one? That's John Logie Baird. So those are uh, three pictures that I have right now. Dorothy and John Logie and color bars. So, I also have um, vertical color bars that can be load that will be loaded. I'll produ be producing some uh, gray steps as well. So, so anyways, compared to my screen size, you can see the size of the actual pixel per pixel images. These. These are actually 32 by 64 pixels on a 1920 by 1080 monitor. So there you go. The pictures, we have some pictures for the memory chips. So moving right along, just to let you know, it's Thursday the 12th of November 2020. I've just completed the first of three Quick Basic 64 programs that will generate the memory chip contents for the Eleanor. This one <laughs> took the uh, 256 source files and copied them into the red, green, and blue. EEPROM files so that every picture location in that EEPROM now contains an image of its actual frame number. There's no pictures. It's still just black and white and each frame location should contain the number of that frame location. That's assuming that the pixels got copied correctly because, bear with me, the pictures you create in Paint Shop or Photoshop or any other program, the pixels are stored in horizontal rows that go from left to right, top to bottom. The mechanical television pictures are read from the bottom right up and from right to left, which means that reading, what I did is when I opened the file of the image, I have to read from the equivalent locations, meaning that I'm not generating sequential pointer locations, but the pointer is jumping all over the place. It starts at the very top pixel in the file, in, in that image file. And then to read up a line, you have to go up, you have to go down 32 bytes. You start at the top byte of the file, you go down, you read the pixel, then you go down 32 bytes. That's the next pixel in that column. In the uh, normal raster file. And then you write those in sequence into the destination file, which takes that upright little picture. It has the effect of mirroring it and flopping it over on its side <laughs> so that when we read it in sequence, it will be read out in the right order so that it is displayed in the right order on an NBTV display. There will be a deep dive where we'll go into this and um, I don't think you can see the bald spots. This new toupee is doing great at covering up the spots where I was ripping out fistfuls of hair 
to take a linear count of 0 to 2047 in my program and based on that number and applying logic to it generating an X and Y location that sequenced through the, re the read file in this wacky order and then of course we pass that to our destination files just one byte at a time because after we've read it out they're going back to the destinations in the correct sequence so I could have read them out in the normal order from the source file but then I would have to write them in the wacky order into the destination file and there's three of those so rather than to manipulate three pointers it's really not that hard it's the single pointer pointing for all three of the files again deep dive get into it we will so that's an update about that I'm overjoyed that the program has run and until the Eleanor is actually outputting video we won't know whether that I have coherent images or if they're scrambled or if the lines are staggered by one pixel per line or you know the things that go wrong when you do this or if um, they're mirror imaged or if they're upside down we'll find out soon enough and mirror image and upside down is very straightforward to fix I even had a case where the logic in the numbers would naturally result in a divide by zero error which of course is not allowed and so I came up with an absolutely elegant solution to fix that so that we never generated a zero and it ran it didn't generate any error messages and when it was done there are three files that are exactly five 124,288 bytes. They're the exact right size. So there we go. We've got red, green, and blue. Let's burn those files into the chips right now. Here's a quick look at my computer screen. The big blue monster on the left side is the uh, basic, the Quick Basic 64, QB64. If you like to bang out quick programs to test ideas, this guy is the guy to do it. If you were an old guy like me that used Quick Basic back in the day, um, you should be overjoyed to find out you can get this program. This, this is a recreation of the original Microsoft program. Under the hood, it runs as a C++ compiler. It is a... It is a... An ass kicker literally compared to original quick basic the resulting programs on this thing are just they're blue light fast it's amazing so anyways that's that's the code over here in that folder in the file folder you can see one highlighted file and two files to the right of it those are our EEPROM files okay Here's the uh, Eleanor, of course. This is my device programmer and the adapter socket. The first thing we have to do is uh, get one of the uh, chips out. I'm only going to program one of them for you and we'll go through that process. So you use this, this uh, very sadistic looking torture device to pull that out we have ways of making you talk so it pulls the chip out and then you put it in your socket making sure you put it in the right way into the test into the adapter socket you put it into the programmer making sure you get these pins right and you lock it down alright this is our application program for the uh, the XG Pro version 8 programmer so we go to our folder with our image EEPROMs and they're right here we've got the red EEPROM in the programmer right now 
so we go over here and it's called an in it in it images red dot bin all right what it means is initial images red that's for the red ee prom and it's a binary file dot bin so we're going to open that one and it's going to be read in as binary and it is in so let's scroll through and see we've got zeros in our buffer we come down here by golly we've got FF's which is what we expect to see because this file should only contain black and white black is zero and FF which is decimal 255 hexadecimal FF is full white we have white numbers printed on a black background so it, it looks good we don't know that it's in the right order and I'm not going to sit here with a piece of graph paper and drive myself crazy so now we go up to device and program alright our device is an is an an ST brand M29 F as in Frank 040 B memory chip and we have it in the programmer in, a, in an adapter socket so let's hit program and so it's first it detects it now it's erasing it it has passed the erase procedure it's now programming the code memory 23 seconds it's checking it it verified it it has passed programming so whatever data we created is now in the memory chip I close that and we are good to go and so now we put our chip back into the board so we take out our adapter grab our torture device slip it in there grab our chip and pop him out and there he goes they like to run away and I don't have good eyes so make sure we put him in the right way and he goes in the socket like this he's lined up pop him down we do the same thing for the green chip and the blue chip all righty, it's Friday the 13th of November. And being Friday the 13th, I'll get to that in a minute. <clears throat> We're looking at the four output signals from the state machine on the 10-4 Eleanor. They are now operational. The top trace is pixel clock. The second trace is uh, frame reset not trace number three is composite sync you'll notice the missing sync pulse in time with the frame reset that's how NB tel NBTV televisors know when the frame starts and the fourth trace is composite blanking all right so the four pulses are present and they're good enough for now so let's expand on what we've got and open it up and take a look at greater detail notice on the upper trace that the pixel clock which is the first trace the white trace has a pause in it during the blanking time the bottom pulse is the blanking pulse and it coincides with the time when the clock is stopped you see when there's no video coming out we don't advance the address counters we stop so each time that upper trace pulse is high we clock out the next pixel during blanking we we don't clock anything out we pause and the uh, the electron uh, not the electron beam the DAX the memory chips are cut off during that time when the when the uh, blanking pulse is high when it's low 
we are outputting video from the memory chip. The third trace is, of course, is our sync pulses, our line sync pulses, and we're expanded too far to see any, and our trigger is such that we're looking at the missing sync pulse period. So I'll back up. Now there's, on the third trace is, is the first sync pulse in the video. So you'll note that on the upper trace there are multiple clocks up there that are aliasing because they're squeezed too close together. Let me expand it. See how they spread out? As we slow the sweep down on the uh, scope, those get closer and closer together until we can't see them anymore. But now we're looking at one line. Look at the two pulses on the bottom trace. That's one line of video. So as we slow the scope down, we see more and more lines, and you can see the pause in the upper trace where the, where the address clock stops or pauses. It doesn't stop. It pauses during blanking and resumes when active video starts. So as we keep slowing the scope down, eventually we get two pulses on the second trace. Between those two pulses is one frame. If we were to count these pulses, the sync pulses, there are 31 sync pulses and a pause. 31 sync pulses and a pause. Blanking blanks all 32 times. My video system outputs video on every single line. I do not blank a line and I don't blank any pixels at the start or stop of the of a line but I do apply blanking and I clock my my pixels pause during the blanking and resume when the blanking turns off. We'll get into that in the deep dive. Now for the bad news. It is Friday the 13th after all. The D to A converters and their op amp have a unique feature which I completely completely forgot about. I'll say the good news first. They're working. They're working fine. As long as I needed video that when it's blanked is zero volts, that's good. But peak white is minus one volt. And I need peak white to be plus one volt or 0.7 volts, whatever value I settle upon. It needs to be positive. They're putting out negative video. So I'm going to have to rework the board to add one more op amp chip. So that's going to cost me a day. I have to remove one of the two video op amps, the quad op amps, and move it so that I can make space to get the th a new third op amp chip in there. It it's easy to fix the problem um, electronically, but of course there's some physical work. I will have to switch out. I will have to remove a chip reposition it and then install a, a third new op amp chip. So probably the rest of today uh, will be spent making that change, adding the rewiring and that will repair this problem and then we'll move on. The good news is the DACs are outputting video of some sort. We'll get into what the video is in the deep dive but let it be known that each frame a video I've created in all 256 locations simply contains a black background with three white numeric digits and the digits are the number of the frame so each frame identifies itself with a number right now no color video or any of that all three chips have identical data so they output black and white so that's where we're at at this point so Stand by for the next update. Should be uh, having the video op amps corrected. Okie dokie. I have to take out this op amp chip <clears throat> and remove the socket and move it this way over down here and put in another socket. So that's what we're going to do now. 
So, let's get started, shall we? Before we go much further, let's make sure we have a 14 pin socket. <laughs> one. We have one 14 pin socket. Okay, we have a socket. That means I have to try to salvage this other one without ruining it. We're going to have fun now, boys and girls. And that's the way it's done. And she's even got all her legs. Woohoo! Okay. So, that's a relief. Okay, so we, we have recovered the socket. Consider I only have one left. I need to put, put two in there. So Off to the store on Monday to buy more. Alright, we got two sockets. We're good to go. Break time. Well, lab guy, you do a good, you do a good job. He lied honestly. Alrighty. Let's um try placing these. I can't see. So one space between them or two. That's one space between them. If I go two spaces between them, uh, he's right up against the LEDs. But apparently that's not a not a showstopper. What do you say? Is that okay? You guys like that? All right. <clears throat> We'll go with that. There we go. Those are in. Now, I need my Sharpie. So we can put outlines on these two chips. Uh -huh. We do have wire in there. That's okay. All right. It can make a difference if you outline those. Don't know if you can see them. But when you're working on these things, it helps. Alright, let's uh let's see here, let's tack down the corner pins. Alright, I'm not soldering all the pins because I end up having to unsolder them to put in the surface mount parts that make up the various circuit configurations. <clears throat> so now, the chip that used to be the second chip is going to move all the way up here to the, the, the top of the board. And the new chip with the three inverting amplifiers will be right next to the red, green, and blue output socket. It's, it's logical. So this D to A and this D to A will be wired to this upper chip. And then from here, well, the, the reference voltage goes into the goes from the op amp to the <laughs> it goes from the pot to the op amp to the D to A from the D to, D to A back to the second op amp and then down to the inverting amplifier and out the jack or down to the three pots that add the uh, red green and blue together to make the black and white so Anyways, that's the uh, that's what it will be. So now I'm going to go ahead and wire that up. I just wanted to see you see you, show you how I uh, take out the socket and put in the new one, and how fast it it could go. Well, it's not done, done. 
but the new the new op amp is in place we got three op amps now on this right hand side and I've wired up the power to to the three op amps and now it's time it, it's time to wire up the eight new op amps the original four and uh, three inverting amplifiers to drive the outputs not not too bad while I was at it over here on this synchronizing latch that goes with our I squared C parallel port I put the same kind of pull down resistors as I have on the video latches so that when this chip boots up in uh, input mode with all of its uh, what should be the output pins floating causing this chip to select frame 255 it now has uh, eight 4.7k pull down resistors on it which will take those floating pins of this guy and pull them low on the latch so the, the board now defaults booting up to frame zero 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 so uh, vast improvement there um, not that it was a major thing you know you just put just put a put a video frame in the uh, in location 255 and you're good to go I was going to stick color bars in there but I'm pretty sure I'm going to put something declaring that this is the uh, the Eleanor if if you can spell Eleanor in the low resolution image I'm not sure but it, it would be fun to put that in there maybe it'll maybe I'll put 10 4 10-4 I don't know yet so thinking thinking ahead so we're at this point now and uh, it's the middle of the evening it's Friday the 13th still 2020 November so um, that's where we're at and we're cooking right along uh, changing that chip taking that socket out of the board and moving it didn't take didn't take 15 minutes total time so all right here it is we have composite video output for the first time from the Eleanor and it proves that I put my data in the video memories correctly. Let me do a simple demo here. Hopefully we won't pop a fuse. But we'll uh, show you some of the images, which are all numbers. One. Two. Four. Eight. Nope. Eight, sixteen, thirty-two, and sixty-four, and one twenty-eight. This proves that I programmed the memory ROMs correctly. I got the pictures right side up, not mirrored. They're not skewed to one side or the other or, or scrambled bits. I'm very pleased with that. I was 100% certain I got it right, which is almost a guarantee that I got it wrong, but I, apparently I was wrong. I got it right. So, the 104 Eleanor board is now outputting composite monochrome video. It's, it's actually putting out RGB as well but these are not color images so there's no reason to look at that just yet just yet um, so this is uh, Saturday the 14th of November 2020 it is 2 15 p.m. in the afternoon and we finally have the 104 Eleanor outputting monochrome video you heard it here first on Lab Guys World. So there. <laughs> Welcome back. I hope you found those those lead-in clips 
informative and uh, inspiring and suitable for improving your curiosity. So that is our bi-weekly update. It's Saturday the 14th of November 2020. The good news is we have this sucker working and I couldn't be happier. So be sure to come back for the next video which should be out in a day or two three, four, whenever I get it out and um, we will see the completed 104 Eleanor RGBY NBTV signal generator in operation in both uh, monochrome and color and that video will be followed by deep dive videos into hardware operation and software creation uh, how the flash memories were programmed both the timing and state machine slash sync generator and the image memories themselves how the images are processed created in the raw form and then transferred into the image memories that are on this board this board will contain 256 still images in its initial design. Eventually I hope to play back um, video loops that's in the future just to give you an idea of what's going on up in here you know with where all the echoes are and uh, like I said keep that excitement high because we are hitting success after success after success and I thank you all for riding along with me and bearing with me on this development process, the construction, the laughter, the tears. And I want to also welcome all of the new subscribers. Thank you. We're up there right now. We're gaining two or three subscribers a day, which for a silly website like this or a YouTube channel uh, is great. I couldn't be happier. I thank you all. I appreciate you all. Thanks for coming and watching my videos. Thanks for appreciating them. Thanks for all of your input. And until next time, Lab Guy out. I'm so happy.